Now, Ansel did send this thing over for a review, but as always, I'm going to give you guys an honest review of it, but stick around to the end where I rank this thing in four different areas to see if it's maybe the right tool for you. But I work for an equipment dealership, and I think this thing might just solve a problem for me. Fresh out of the box, of course, you're going to get the tool itself an included user manual and a bag of diagnostic connectors, including the main diagnostic cable, the diesel six to nine, and the cat nine. Now, most of the time I am gonna run the diesel six to nine in this thing, but speaking of cables, they've gone ahead and provided what seems to be a pretty robust set of diagnostic cables. The cable itself is pretty thick, nice feeling. You have some nice strain reliefs and the plastic itself kind of feels rugged, which is something I would expect out of something that's meant for a heavy duty application, which is actually a lot more than I can say for the actual device or scan tool. The thing actually feels pretty cheap, pretty plasticky. It would have been nice if they included some rubber, at least at bare minimum on the ends, but it feels a little too cheap for the type of device that it is and type of equipment this thing is supposed to connect to. But with this stuff, who even makes a scan tool that can talk to any of this? We have things like this Taylor with a John Deere engine in it. And then there's this Taylor. This is an empty container handler, likely has a Volvo engine in it. This is a Trackmobile, has a Cummins engine in it. Same thing with this Calmar, Cummins. Same thing with this Kumatsu, Cummins. There's JLGs. In the back of the lot here, there's a Hangcha right there, a Heister right there. And finding a scan tool for all of this, a scan tool that can talk to many of these things is quite a challenge. Many of the times we're stuck with OEM products that are very expensive to get into technicians' hands. But that's where this Ansel steps in. So I've got this thing plugged into the diagnostic port right back. You see it right there? Now, I know that it's a John Deere engine in this vehicle, so I'm going to jump right into John Deere. And that's going to do its thing and say, please confirm that the ignition switch is on. I'm going to say, OK, you can go into diagnostic mode and do a manual selection. Right. And this is a John Deere. But this is all look at all these vehicles, all these John Deere and John Deere is one of the harder ones that you know a lot of guys are, are are having an issue right finding ways to get into John Deere and do things that they need to do about them so this is that's everything that it includes under the straight up John Deere but also under John Deere we have these sub models right and if these are applicable to your field, boom, this is this tool might work for you. But I'm going to jump into John Deere and I know I need to scroll down to OEM engines and we have a diesel now. Boom, it's asking me which diesel I have and it even tells you if data is available for that model. So what we're going to do is scroll down and the engine installed in this vehicle is a four zero four five. And it's boom, it confirms everything you just selected before you continue. Connect. And this this thing looks, the software, the way this thing works, looks a lot nicer than many of the softwares out there. I'm just telling you right now. Now, with this John Deere, it does take a little bit to initialize. Now it connects, connecting to models, it establishing connection. It takes, yeah, maybe, I wanna say, this process takes about 60 seconds. Boom, 100% loading, engine control unit, which, I mean, if there's only one button, I think they could probably do better by jumping right into what I'm looking at. But boom, I'm in. Look at that. I can read the fault code, which I'm pretty sure this one has one in it. Boom, if you could see that. Water and fuel, right? Because this thing does have a display. And that tells you also what's wrong with it. 
So we go back and we can read live data and we'll do data list all. And boom, in comes the entire list of data. But what we can do here is once I click one of these, watch what happens, it disappears. If I click all the water and fuel ones, they disappear, where'd they go? So the smart thing that Ansel did with this software is that once it knows that there's so many data points that it's hard to you know call out the ones that you want, but you could just click on whatever one you want in this list and it'll put it at the top. You kind of have to like scroll to the empty space and it'll pop in. But if I wanted to see engine hours along with all that stuff, boom it's right at the top amongst you know all the other parameters i just selected in yellow and that's that's a killer feature especially when there's so many data points that you can't really discern what's what now let's see if we can do something do other things with this if i hit compare what happens so nothing's really there if i hit graphic boom all my highlighted ones are still at the top. I love it. That's some thought right there. I love the thought of that. You might be wondering, right? The biggest thing, a lot of a lot of thing with diesels when it comes to diesels is can it do a regen? Which, yes it does. Got to jump out of the manufacturer specific menu, scroll over and hit DPF. Now, you can see one's missing, Cummins. I did confirm that the Cummins is available to do a DPF regen, but it's not in this menu. You can click in the John Deere. It's gonna load up. It's gonna do basically the same thing. Please confirm, hit connect. Engine control unit, boom. Service regeneration. And if I click this, it'll actually tell me to, you know, it failed and the engine must be on. So it's not gonna do it anyways. But it can do a regen on a John Deere. It can also do it on a Cummins. I confirm that you just have to lie to the thing and tell it that it's a Komatsu and then uh, uh, hit okay and then jump in the engine. And then it says Cummins right there. I wish they broke that out, but underneath this menu, you can connect to any Cummins engine it's just gonna pull the parameters from the ECU and and talk to it like that but here is the list of equipment and brands you can work on like I said Cummins is under Komatsu so you have Caterpillar Volvo Komatsu John Deere Bobcat then scroll one page case Hitachi and Yanmar we deal with that uh, Yanmar engines but the connector, it's not the regular six and nine pin connector. Please confirm the ignition switch is on, but it does have marine software in here. So I'm wondering if I got the right connector for this scan tool, it would be able to talk to Yanmar engines. I'm I'm thinking it is since I jump into Yanmar and it's and it's wanting to ask me, you know, if it's a marine application. Many of the uh, engines that they install in our equipment are marine application or also industrial engines, and it's gonna you know ask about that stuff. So yeah, I think if if this if I got the right connectors this could prob possibly talk to a lot of the, the engines that we need it to talk to for under guys this is a tool that's under 500 bucks if we go straight into hd obd the key our key is still on isn't it right i'm going to tell us the diesel six to nine pin we're going to do a fast scan of the protocol and just start the test this thing this thing is 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 really surprising me because like i said We've been using a $10,000 laptop, diesel laptop, to do a lot of the things that this thing can do. And this will just straight up tell you what uh, what kind of things on it. So it's a J1939, which is a, a standardized protocol. And I have one engine fault and 23 transmission faults on it. 
I mean, you can do HD OBD, and if you were in a situation where you have machines and and this is the tool you have, and maybe your service vehicle popped a quick code, boom, you can jump in through regular OBD too and check codes on that too because the connector, the connector is an OBD to six to nine pin converter. So you can just pop this piece out, hop in here, and be like, boom, what's this code my service vehicle just popped? This thing is 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 really surprising, actually. So I'm gonna test this thing out, the Cummins function out on this track mobile right here. All right, we got our key on. We are gonna prop this thing up somewhere. So hopefully we can get some good vision out of it. Plug in our connector here. We should. Boom. So boom, we're straight booted up into the thing and we're gonna do HD OBD. We are gonna see, we have ignition on, diesel six and nine pin, and let's see if we can find Cummins in a regular. Boom, okay, engine. Now can we enter that? Does it know it's, is it gonna know that it's a Cummins? Cummins, engine, nice. Hit confirm. Uh, live data, now we do get live data. We do get this broken down like this. Now, I want to see if this can pull the other stuff. Like, I wonder if I can actually get into all of these these systems. If I click transmission, what happens? Confirm. Live data. All data. We do get some transmission data. Electronic transmission controller one and controller two, engine controller two, transmission fluids one. Look at that. Okay, nice. It's calling this a tire pressure controller. Confirm, live data, all data. Bro, are you serious? This thing is reading the actual modules on a trackmobile. I'm moving this joystick and I'm getting, look at that. This thing, that surprises me. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with this thing. Some of these are things you can actually enter and see the data from, which is a godsend. For something like this, being able to diagnose this track mobile, I thought we were just going to be able to talk to the engine by plugging this thing in, but no, we can talk to a lot of things. If I probably, if I dig through here enough, I could probably find information for everything on this, uh, everything on this machine. I don't know why it leaves Cummins under Komatsu, but as you can see, DPF regeneration is right there. So... I have diagnostic mode, DPF, and display wiring diagram. When I click that, it brings up a bunch of different uh, bunch of different options. But DPF regeneration, it auto detects. We're going to go auto detect and see if this can do a regen because a lot of times you'll have an issue and you need to regen and we'll hit confirm and we'll hit confirm look at this region screen we have all our data points right here we'll hit f1 to start you hear that engine pick up we are regening off a of 500 dollar tool guys and are we outputting data too no that's oh we do have uh intermittent so we have a little bit of a slow update speed yeah we have a little bit of a uh, slow update speed we'll stop it start stop back yeah boom this can do a region huh it's not so that's a little bit of a 
a little bit of a farce right there. You'll have to scroll the list once you start. Yeah, disable. See how it says D disable? So you'll have to, have to reset. But this can do a regen. All right, so let's rank this thing. In terms of quality, this thing does have a very decent set of diagnostic cables. The strain reliefs were good, the plastic feels good, the rubber feels good in that area. But when it comes to the device itself, it's very plasticky, it does have a nice touch screen, but we're gonna give it a C in that area. We do have an additional issue with sometimes the threading on the diagnostic port here is a little iffy. It's hard to get it set in the right place. It feels like you're sometimes going to cross thread it, but that's another reason why this thing's getting a C in terms of quality. Software is very nice, very beautiful, very no frills at the same time. When it comes to the data list, it was nice that you were able to touch the selected PIDs and throw them to the top of your list, especially when you go into graphing the specific things you want. You can combine it and it's kind of confusing and that leads to why it's getting a C plus. It, if it a little couple touches, it would have been a B, but that leads into connectivity. Now you only get the four connectivity options. You get the OBD2, you get the Cat9, you get the Diesel 6 to 9. It would have been that much nicer if they included more connectivity options, like the ability to buy additional cables or connectors to see if I can connect to other vehicles. Cause some, not everything uses those same four plugs, but with the connectors it's, that are included, this thing can connect to a bunch of different vehicles and it was able to pull a lot of data that surprised even me out of vehicles that even the manufacturer doesn't give us official means to do. Like for example, that track mobile. When it comes to connectivity, it's definitely getting a B, but there's also another caveat you gotta realize when it comes to this thing. This thing does not power up on its own. It includes no built-in battery. There is a provision for a printer, which another reason why this thing's getting a B in connectivity, but there is a USB on the top of it, does nothing. The only way to power this thing is if the vehicle you're connecting to has power through the port. Now, that's the only way this thing will actually wake up and let you use the software. Now, I found that an issue if you have a vehicle that doesn't supply power, but it also can talk to it, you have to supply supplemental power. Now, there is a provision for that on the diagnostic cable, but Ansel doesn't include, doesn't include the alligator clips in the box. So when it comes to price, this thing is gonna land in a solid A ranking just for the fact that this thing can do what it can do and it can talk to John Deere's and Cummins and do regens for both, just for those things alone. This thing is a pretty nice device for the amount of money that they want for it. And for a limited time, if you check in the description, Ansel's gonna be giving us a code Garnet20 This is gonna give you $20 off of this device on their actual website, which puts it in the $400 range, just above $400 for what this thing can do, that's definitely A rank. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you who this thing is for. This is for those entry level situations when maybe you need to just go check a unit, check a piece of equipment, see what kind of codes are on it, see the data stream, and maybe do a regen. This thing is perfect for those situations. Maybe you just run out in the field with this to see if you need to connect to it with a more expensive scan tool perfect for that situation as well or maybe you're out on your own and you just need to be able to talk to talk to the thing and see if you can fix it yourself without including a dealership or something like that but if you needed to throw an injector on something and program an injector code or even reset a vgt program a new actuator on something this is not going to be able to do that as far as bi-directional controls go the only thing this can do is dpf regions this is one of those things where not too many brands even make an equipment scan tool and this is one of the very few options you have aside from going to the dealer and getting the expensive dealer labor or dealership to have a look at your machine but that's it that's all i have for you the ansel hd 3600 is a very nice scan tool for the amount of money that they want for it as always links for everything i talked about in this video will be in the description down below if you like make sure you check out the merch link if you want but thank you guys for watching i really do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one peace